Okay. Hi guys. My name is Trevin or Trevin versus NFT. And this is our first podcast and I'm more than welcome to have on. Hey, I'm Gunter. I'm the uh, founder of Magic Mushies. Yeah. So uh, Gunter and me connected uh, a little while back when I got into Magic Mushies. And then from there on, we've been talking. So I've been wanting to do a podcast for a very long time. And since I'm a big fan and huge believer of Magic Mushies, want to have the owner talk about it. So, uh, first question I'm going to ask is, what brought you to Solana? Yeah, man. So, um, I was originally, I've been in crypto for a fair few years. And I was, um, one of the things that brought me over to Solana was I had, I bought a fair bit of Ethereum back in the day. Um, well, like 20th ETH under $100. Ended up having to sell it because I hurt my neck. Uh, it was a work thing. Like, had to have time off work. But I was on... Open sea one day, and I was looking at buying a V friend, and it was one ETH at the time. Didn't buy it because I didn't know much about NFTs. And then, and honestly, like the transaction fee, gas kind of scared me off a bit back then. Um, so then I was like, I was just, I just kept um, researching. I was in a few discords, and I see like Solana NFTs pop up. And I was like, oh man, what's this? This is like early August. And I'll go over, and the only two marketplaces, they were Digitalize and Solonart and I'm on Solonart and DGen apes were like four sol. And I think it is just after they minted. They're like four or six, I can't remember. But I I looked at it. I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. Like they look cool, but I can't justify spending like it was three hundred dollars at the time. Mm. And then I sort of didn't look at it again, came back like three days later, and they're at seventy floor. And I was just like, man. I can't miss this. Like, this is awesome. So then after that, I literally every day, I would just throw myself into like Sol NFTs after work for hours upon hours. Like literally I'd get home at like 2 p.m. from work and just straight into Sol NFTs. And then, yeah, it's just sort of grew from there. Like threw myself into the communities, into the discords. And then, yeah, now I'm, now I'm here. I love it. Yeah, honestly, though, like we're very happy to have you um, in the Sol community. I know that we're growing very, very fast. I started in September, so like uh, probably a little bit after you did. Um, and we're like this year, I have a good feeling. Um, but that also brings me to my next question. Um, what do you think of the current state that Solana and the NFT community is in right now? Yeah, man. Um, it's interesting. It's definitely changed a lot since I was in. Like when I first started, there was one mint a week, pretty much. Like, and everyone sort of knew each other. Like, there was always, you'd go to different discords and they'd always be the same faces around. They're still around. Like I still see people all the time. Um, but I feel like there's been a lot of investors come in recently that are like, I feel like they have never invested in stocks, never invested in crypto. They're just seeing like videos on TikTok or people talking about NFTs. And they're going, oh shit, man, I'm going to try my luck. They get in, they try to make a quick bag. And if they can't make it, they just dip on a project. I feel like the space, there's still like, there's still mature investors in it that are looking at the project long-term, but I feel like a majority of the people that are coming in now are only looking at it with like a gambler's mindset. Like they're hitting that mint lottery. If they can't get a rare, they're moving on to the next project and they don't truly care about what the project's trying to build. So I feel like for Solana to continue improving, continue moving up and for more people to actually notice it, that needs to stop. We need to bring in, like, we need to have a honestly a mini crash to scare out all these people that are never invested before, never been through a crash. Like a lot of mature investors have been through crashes before. They're not, they're not scared. Like, if you've been in crypto for a while, you don't care if something drops twenty five percent a day. You're just chilling. Like, you know the long term of it. Like, you know the five year plus. Um, so I really feel like Sol NFTs. They need a way to make investors a bit more mature at the moment. And to actually look into projects and not just follow hype. There's a lot of hype and buzzwords like staking. If you're not earning $5 a day, I don't want it. And it's like, man, you should actually invest in projects with teams that show their face. Even if they don't show their face, just competent teams that have a proven track record. The moment too many people are just investing into anything and everything. And they're not looking at it as investing. They're looking at it that's almost gambling and it's yeah it's bad man because um they get rugged and then 
they don't want to get rugged and then they go tell their friends they got rugged and then no one wants to come in because they just lost their money on their first mint because they did no research. Yeah, Um. could you actually go over rugging if you don't mind for the uh, new viewers listening? Yeah, man. So pretty much uh, rug pull. It's called a rug, but it means rugs pull, like to sweep the rug under someone's feet. And it'll be like when someone mints a project and then any time frame, like we've seen a week, we've seen a day, they'll just instantly, they'll just delete their Discord, delete their Twitter, take all the money and leave. So they don't follow through on their roadmap. Um, you still get the art, but you just get nothing else behind it. And then usually what happens is the floor price just absolutely tanks, goes down and you've just lost 90%. Has there been any like major projects that you minted in the past that were actually a rug pull? Um, I've actually the only time I've been rugged was Kangaroo Fight Club, which the only re reason they rugged was because the mint went really slow. So they actually had mm. a fair bit of hype going into it, and then halfway through the mint, they just weren't selling out, and they said they were going to make a game, and they go, "Oh, well, we can't make the game with no money." And then they got a pretty bad reaction. So they just rugged. They just left. They took what they had. But I've been pretty lucky. Well, not lucky. Like, I just, I don't really mint anything hype based. Like, I try to look into good projects and look at the long term. Um, if, it, if there is hype and the devs stick around afterwards, I'll just buy it off secondary. But I'd rather not take mm. the chance. Especially the current meta, like seeing a lot of rugs and a lot of copy paste projects. So it's like... Only one of them long terms ultimately going to succeed. You can't have seven projects following the same roadmap and expect them all to be the next big, like the next big thing. Yeah, no, I I do agree with that. We're definitely in a interesting state of NFTs where it's a lot mm. of copy and paste. So, like like you're saying that the huge thing right now is staking. Yeah, like every single project is doing that. Yeah, um, well, you have to. <laughs> Like even us, exactly. ours is like a pure community focused project. Like we wanted to build a really big community, like build a family. And a couple of days after minting, everyone's like, when are you staking? Where's the coin? Yep. We're like, well, yeah. man, that wasn't part of our project. And then they started calling us a rug. I was like, man, we're not a rug. It wasn't part of our roadmap. Like we never promised it. We ended up implementing it, but we didn't create our own coin, our own liquidity pool. We took on a coin called Zion which ultimately I'm incredibly bullish on. And that's the other thing is like, I'm not bearish on soul NFTs long-term. I still think hundred percent, like they are the future. Like they are definitely the way NFTs in general, like all these little NFTs might explode, like Nia might explode soon as well, which is another chain, um, especially long-term, like a five year plus outlook on them. I just think short-term just needs to be a bit of a mindset shift with the current investors. I I fully agree with that. I feel like a crash would also like help like have diamond hands, for example. Yeah. So you're holding like if like you've been in the scene for a while, like you said, you don't mind if you drop twenty five percent. Like yeah, you you've had that before, and I feel like what's happening right now, even with the NFT project I was in, I aped in around seven soul, and everyone since there's a couple big rug pulls, were trying to get liquidity, so they were dropping yeah. the floor. And the floor is now at three. So yeah. I'm just like that, which is honestly fine with me because I'm still holding um, and I'm good to go. I'm I'm diamond hands. I aped into the project. Yeah. I don't mind because I know we're going to go up again. Yeah. And that's the thing. You need high conviction on everything you buy. Like every time I buy something, I go through like the risk to reward. Like obviously I do have a few high risk plays that I don't intend on holding long term. But I would say like 90% of my portfolio is all just long-term holds. Things that I know will still be around. They have teams working around them. I think that's what, and you might not see it, Might there might be a crash in a lot of these smaller projects and then everything consolidates into the current blue chips. And that's something that, that would be incredibly bullish short-term. But I still think just short-term at the moment, there's too much saturation. There's too much of a mint frenzy going on. It's just not sustainable. So many newbies are coming in. They're just losing all their money. But it'll turn yeah. around. It's the same as any crypto, really. It will It will uh, be a fun adventure. Yeah. Um. So, like, talking about mints and everything, is there any projects you're possibly looking forward to mint this month? Um, Not really. Just because going on, 
what I'm going, like what I've just been saying. And with the current meta, it's a whitelist only meta. You're not going to mint the project unless you have whitelist. I don't have time to get whitelist. <laughs> like pretty much all my time's focusing on building magic mushies as a brand and as a community. So I don't have time to hang in other discords and pretty much sit around for whitelist all day. Like it, it's pretty crazy at the moment. And that's another thing that's stopping is there's a big barrier of entry which like they used soul used to have no barrier of entry because of no gas fees but now if you come in and you're not in a big get big dow getting whitelist you're not going to get a whitelist spot and you're going to have to buy on secondary which most time you'll buy in that initial hype that initial mint out hype phase where it does a three to four x and then it always pulls back um so a lot of new people coming in they're not able to mint because of the whitelist only thing which i think needs to stop um they say it's because of bots. You can use captures. It's annoying. I don't know if that's 100% bot proof, but it's still like it's still something and it allows everyone to have a chance. Um, but yeah, I think the whitelist only matter. It's not. It's definitely not helping. There's a few things adding up together that just aren't helping the ecosystem and they need to change to make it more beginner friendly and just more friendly all around, like welcoming and a place where investors actually feel confident in what they're going into yeah and i i fully agree with that that's what i'm trying to build on my back end of just like helping new people into it because like yeah. i was new i i've only been into it for around six months yeah like that still doesn't make sense to me how far i've come and um when when people say like a week in nfts is like a month yeah in that's real true. Life, like that's <laughs> true everything moves so quick because yeah. we're so early and this year, I just really want to just really go down on Web3 and learn as much as I can yeah. and just surround myself like people like you that have been in it for like a little bit. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They have their own projects. And I love connecting with those people because though though you are the people that are really paving NFTs because we're so early. Yeah, well, that's the other thing too is like Web3 is such a good time to get into it. Like, I know it is cliche. Everyone's like, oh, we're early. We actually are. But it's like it, there's never been a better time as a creative to enter a space and try to make money. Like there's so many ideas people out there that are always like every day, oh, I'm going to start this business. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I've got all these ideas in my head. This is probably truly the only place where you can make any idea happen. The, the sky's the limit, really. There's not like you're in the business world now. You're going to follow a model that's already been done. Like you're pretty much to innovate in the current business world in real life it's almost impossible and then you've got competition against every big corporate company you you're really not going to make it coming into web3 you can do whatever you want like art style you can take a project whatever direction you want you can let your creativity flow with marketing like marketing is so much easier here um, to go in a different path to where no one else has gone i think it's such a good time and artists are finally getting their appreciation which like in society, mostly it has been like creatives don't really get the same attention and the same opportunities because um, it is a corporate world, like a corporate and trade world. Everything runs around revolving around business and how to do business, how to make finances. But this is a way for creatives and artists, like so many artists are out there who are so passionate and they have to give up art and only do it as like a minor hobby because they just can't make a living off it. But now you can. There's honestly never yeah. a better time to hop onto the internet and just learn how to do these things. Honestly yeah. though, like I'm I'm so hyped that we have people like you that see the future web three. Like yeah, I just made a TikTok a little bit about even though it is the stake meta, I'm actually earning some uh, decent like income. They have great yeah. devs, AMAs almost three times a week. They even told us we want this project to be three to four years out. Yeah, you don't hear that in the NFT community right now. It's all about quick sales, leaving and moving on, just like you're saying. So then going back to being a creative, the time is now. Like, oh, um, if 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 you guys don't already know, I'm a part time wedding photographer and a uh, videographer. So as a creative, like this literally gets me even more hyped because photography is my passion. And I literally just did like a minor little thing of just, Hey guys, this is my art. I uh, did my first collection. Um, but I'm just like, as 
more and more you get into it, you truly can change your creativity into a full-time job instead of like a part-time job or knocking your um, recognition. There are these amazing photographers that are coming to the scene and they're making money on cryptocurrency and they don't know what to do about it because it's an NFT and it's so yeah. brand new. So That's like our artist. He's had his life change. He lives over in Turkey. He, um, the economic crisis over there is bad. Like it is really bad. And um, he was a tattoo artist. So no one can afford tattoos anymore over there. Like they're literally, they were rioting a couple, I think it was a month or two ago because their dollar has just gone down compared to the US dollar. I think it's the Turkish lira. No, I don't don't want to pronounce it too wrong. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure from what he said, their inflation rose 50% in like a week or two. So people wow. just weren't like they're working 80 hour weeks just to survive and they're barely surviving at that. So he had an opportunity. He did our art. And since then he's been creating his one of one brand and man, he's just like, he had his first 20 soul sale the other day. So he's like, awesome. this has given him the opportunity and he wants to leave Turkey and go find like another place where he can settle down and live where the economy is a bit more settled. Um, and yeah, this gives him the opportunity to do that and to travel the world, which is what he wants to do. So it's like, man, no matter what country you're in, you can do this. You have access to this. Unless you're web blocked. When? Then you don't have access. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know how it is. I, <laughs> I, I also love it because like, that brings up a good point. Like We have people around the world coming together. And yeah. this literally reminds me of when I was in Boy Scouts and we had a CBD radios. Yeah, I was able to talk to someone in Canada. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like so cool. Like they're, they're in a different country. So it's really bringing back kind of my inner child yeah. because first of all, you have amazing art. You're bringing the whole world together through the internet. And I feel like people just don't appreciate that enough. Bro, I am shocked now when I hear an Aussie accent. <laughs> so I, there is no, oh, there are heaps of Aussies. But like when I'm on during the day, everyone's at work. So it's like, I always just talking to like Americans and how it's like that just never would have been a thing. Like if you told me 10 years ago, I wouldn't be working and I'd be running a business of online pitches. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have told you to get fucked. <laughs> it just wouldn't have happened. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I love that. Um, so I think like, Coming to a close, I want to give the rest of the time to Gunter and just really going over his project and why you should join the Magic Mushy Gang. Yeah, yeah, okay, sweet. Um, yeah, pretty much we, being around the space for a while, I saw this big shift from a community focus to making money focus. And I wanted to bring back the community focus. Um, saw the art, well, I got inspired from the art by a chick on my Instagram. She, um, put it up as her story and she's like, oh, I just started something. And it's actually the closest thing that I can say it is, is our current website art. It's like a big monk with a huge like mushroom head smoking out of a shisha. Um, and it kind of looked like that. And that's where I got the idea. And I went to my mate and I was like, who I met in the space. I was like, dude, we have to make this project. We have to bring back community. You know what it is. And he's like, yep, found an artist who lives in Turkey, who also met through the space. Like the networking in the space is just crazy. Um, and then, yeah, he did the art. We loved it, started marketing. And our whole thing was, we don't want to build an external product without focusing on the community. And so many projects focus on an external project uh, product and they just sort of ignore the community. And we wanted to have that, like a lot do it great. They have that fine line 50-50, but we wanted to be 100% into the community, see how it is, be involved, be with everyone, host like weekly educational sessions. We have a weekly market scan. We've hired community members um, so they can now make a little bit of extra income. We're planning on doing like a lot of educational content and just like helping people evolve and grow within the space. And yeah, it's just like, we just wanted somewhere where after a hard day at work or if you're feeling a bit alone, you can come in and have a good time. Um, and the whole thing is like psychedelics, magic mushies, everything's about spirituality, like mental health, wellness, well-being. 
and we wanted to really combine all that within a discord in a place that can be quite draining on mental health um everyone sees it like some people are full-time they're in their rooms full-time like i am too massive change for me at work i used to be like very big social arena like always have people around and now i've just got no one so it's like it's awesome to be in a discord where you can talk to people all day and um yeah we do have a little play to earn game in our discord it's just a nice little discord game but you can earn nfts off it and then um we're bringing out a gen 2 soon 666 supply super limited and man these are going to have some awesome benefits touching back on that educational aspect um the roadmap there yeah we're going to release a platform with a whole bunch of courses and educational videos and it for the time being it'll be available distinctly to the gen 2 um but the gen 2 will also be a multiplier for the gen 1 to get zion which is the ecosystem we're part of it's cat cartels token ecosystem um and yeah it's it's amazing what they're building over there they're actually building a real token with utility that will bring in outside investors so that liquidity pool isn't just self-funded isn't going to drain and crash in a couple months it's built for longevity so um, i was really excited to partner with them and we have the freshest merch in the game embroidered High stitch count. Woohoo! Look at the back. <laughs> nice clip. Mate, you honestly, you can't get better than that. We got some stickers. QR codes. My other stickers. Gonna smack that up in public. Get some more people to join the community. You know how it is. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um but yeah so uh that is magic mushies and a quick rundown by gunter um and it's fun it's come in yeah chill out like don't take everything so seriously not everything in this space has to be so serious like you can come and just vibe out anything we have events all the time we're always on voice chat where um as devs we're accessible to you instead of being hard to contact so that's i think that's one of the biggest things I love that. Honestly, though, like it, it is nice to go into a Discord where you're not afraid to say what you want. Mm. Like, and I think a lot of good things is that this year, I think more people should focus on mental health. Yeah. Um, and I think not a lot of people talk about it. Like, it's a big issue. Like, I even I battle with depression sometimes. Yeah. Um, but just, like, it's does, it's man. nice. Yeah. It's 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 nice when you just can go to the community and just vibe judgment free too we have a mental health channel yeah. and there's never been any judgment like anytime someone posts in you know, it all it is is love and support and that is something that i believe is so important like we need to build each other up instead of bring each other down and yeah. it's rare it's rare to have people behind keyboards who are anonymous that are being so nice to each other and want to see everyone succeed and that's the biggest thing too i just want to see everyone succeed in this space i'll put you yeah. on the hot seat now <laughs> what's your favorite thing about the community um honestly just community in general like i thrive off of uh positivity yeah um i'm huge on it like i've always been the person that talks to random people on the street and people are like what the heck is wrong with you yeah like you should uh not be doing that because i live in washington and <laughs> you don't talk to anybody you put really? on your hood and you just walk around heaven oh, forbid man. you talk to someone on the street so different here um, hey <laughs> yeah no so it's just like it's kind of kind of a culture shock yeah um but yeah no so like uh community is everything um i did get rug pulled twice so that was a little tough yeah um but i've just found so many good communities i've also done a lot more research about myself now um and i'm just a part of a lot bigger groups like i'm a, a friends with a lot more people that just have the same mindset yeah um i'm just high off of nfts and i'm really looking forward to this year and there's gonna be a lot to happen because like under said we are so so early yeah so mate you're early in the podcast game too I am, yeah. Indeed. There's We're not, gonna... not many good soul <laughs> NFT podcasts. Yes, so that was another reason why I wanted to uh, just bring podcasts and also just tell everybody about my experience and Web3 and NFTs in general, and we can just enjoy it. So, Yeah, absolutely.
but yeah so i think we'll just uh make it to a close um i truly want to say gunter thank you so much for joining the podcast on my first ever trevin versus nft <laughs> yeah no thanks for having me it's been fun um but yeah is there anything else you'd like to add before we leave not really just stay safe out there do some research stop following all these hyped influencers and fomoing in on their purchases you don't have to do your own research you'll get there everyone gets there in the end you're still early buy some solid projects and hold them buy some mushies there you go <laughs> yes buy some mushies <laughs> i do appreciate mushies i have five myself so definitely go check them out on magic eden um and thank you guys so much for watching and listening and good morning and good night you